Welcome to Legacy of Changes. This is going to be a metagame show that discusses in detail a lot of the changes in StarCraft transitioning into Legacy of the Void because there are a lot. Each episode we will be covering one subject as deep as possible. Uh, each episode is going to have a very targeted breadth but very deep. Um, in any case, I want to introduce the, our panelists this evening. Uh, to my right is none other than Rock from One Step Ahead. Tell us a little bit about yourself, bro. Uh, thank you, Chef. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, I am a North American Zerg player, Grandmaster on NA, EU, and Legacy of the Void. So really excited to be talking about um, Legacy of the Void and all of its changes. Nice, nice. Beneath me and I don't mean in ladder ranking, is uh, Telecom from the Team Liquid strategy team. Telecom? Hey guys, uh, Telecom, also uh, Grandmaster Zerg from NA server, um, and also Grandmaster on Legacy of the Void. Uh, really been enjoying the uh, changes a lot. It's a lot more like Brood War. Has me excited. And then our final guest in the bottom right corner is Torque. Hey guys, I'm Torque. I am a Pro Dust player, mainly playing Legacy of the Void right now. Uh, played a lot of Heart of the Swarm though. I'm glad to be here. Tonight, our subject is going to be the economy. Um, in fact, the main reason for choosing this subject is outlined very, very well in Zero Miss, uh, by Zero Miss in his treatise on the economy of StarCraft II. I'm just going to quote from that real quick because I cannot put it in better words. In StarCraft, Everything flows from the economy, all strategies, all builds, and all approaches to the game. And any change to the economy will have extensive effects. Therefore, they must be examined closely. The economy in StarCraft II should be challenged and examined critically. Not to debate the work done by Blizzard, but to understand and examine the effects it has on strategic diversity in StarCraft II. I believe that taking the economy changes at face value does a disservice to the beta process. Perfect quote for this show. He wrote it for something else, but perfect quote for this show. So I guess the most important first question to ask you guys, and just chime in, um, there's no real particular precedent, order, or anything like that. What are the most relevant changes to economy and legacy of the void? I would say the macro mechanic changes. <clears throat> Everything else mostly just speeds up the game. Mm -hmm. But things are fairly similar. Like you still, like pre macro mechanic change, you still had like quote unquote for production facilities for a base for Protoss. Like you can support up to four gateways on one base if you're completely all in, right? Or you can go up to eight gates on two base. Like that remained true. You just couldn't do it for as long. With the now technically with Protoss, the interesting thing is removing Chrono Boost is you can still support that. It just takes a lot lot not a lot longer, but longer to be able to support that. But it makes the change where especially for Terran Mm -hmm. You can't support as much as you could before. So I think with the macro mechanic change, it's definitely the biggest one, especially for Terran. With Chrono Boost uh, being changed, do you think that the uh, developers will cut down some of your key tech timings to compensate? Yeah, they already did Warp Gate and they did the Disruptor, the last patch. Like, mm -hmm. I think that's currently in here. Warp Gate's 20 seconds slower and Disruptor's 10 seconds slower than before. Mm -hmm. And I think they'll continue to do that. It'll be interesting how many and specifically what things they'll do, because... Protoss uh, had an issue with tech changes in Heart of the Swarm, mm -hmm. which is mostly apparent. You can see when they have to, like, they scout a spire in PvZ and they want a macro. They want they don't want a base trade all in. So they're like, okay, time to make Phoenixes. And you see them make two, gate, uh, two Stargates if it's pretty last minute and constantly chrono out Phoenixes. Now if you see a spire and you put two Stargates down, you know, it's very, very difficult, right? You have to see the spire really quickly, basically, currently. And at the same so time, though, it... that's something. At yeah. the same time, though, with the auto inject change, there is less larva, and that's the interesting part. Um, yes. Part about removing macro mechanics altogether mm -hmm. is because Zerg mm -hmm. doesn't have the extra larva that does really pack the punch. But at the same time, there's no chrono, so you can't react as quickly. So that is that is what's interesting about completely removing the macro mechanics. And again, they could always change everything so that it was basically the same like 
percentage wise, like a uh, rate. It's hard to really explain this, but like ratio mm-hmm. of like larvae to probes and like ability to produce things. They can always balance around it. It's mostly the implications of does will Protoss have enough reaction time to react to things Zerg have? Will Zerg have enough larvae to consistently keep up? As far as I've seen so far, that is yes. Zerg does seem to have enough larvae to be able to do what they want to do. Maybe not as much in the early game, but definitely in the later game, they can supplement it with macro hatches. It's just you know getting there can be difficult. Indeed. And with right. Terran, it's just difficult. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Telecom? Yeah. Um. I mean, I think that honestly, uh, Terran does have it. I mean, a little probably the most difficult. I mean, normally you'd see Terran pushing out to you know, take the, the creep spread off the map, and I think that is what people, I think that's honestly the biggest issue right now, even as a Zerg player, I feel like it's pretty easy to spread creep at the moment, because you don't really have to worry about injecting, you, you can use all your time, uh, you know, if you're playing a more defensive style, it's also a lot more easier to just focus on spreading spreading creep, and I feel like uh, for Terran or Protoss players, it becomes pretty difficult to, like, keep the creep down. Um, just because of with the new mechanic changes, it's a lot. It seems a lot more simple for a Zerg to spread creep. Um, although at the same time, um, they do have you do have to be more wary of where you're spending your your creep or your excuse me your your larva. Because um, if you if you over drone, it's a lot it's a lot easier to over drone or over produce in, in Legacy of the Void. I'd say uh, make a quick mistake and ma- uh, macro improperly. I agree. So it seems like everybody's consensus is that the biggest change was the macro mechanic, is that correct? Yeah, I'd say so. Okay, and yeah. of all the changes, um, do you think uh, they'll all be kept, they'll all be discarded, or somewhere in between? That's the hard part. I, have I no feel idea. like, honestly, <laughs> the uh, Protoss' warp-ins being at s- taking 16 seconds to, to uh, offensive warp-ins, that'll probably be, uh, you know... Uh, lower to maybe 10 seconds or 12 or something around there um, and then also I feel like they'll, they'll probably lo- uh, lower the reduce the ta- the upgrade times for mm-hmm. Protoss on Forge um, other than that I mean I feel like Terran is, is, is you know I also I mean as far as like unit w- goes unit wise um, I feel like the Liberators will probably get a, a damage reduction as well. 85 damage seems a little bit overkill, to be honest. Um, okay. Uh, Rock, is that a Zerg shirt in your background? That is a Zerg shirt in the background, indeed. I oh, see Rock it. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you can see it. And there's a calendar right above it, too. Nice, <laughs> nice. That Zerg passion. Yes, exactly, man. All right, so... Uh, Moving to a little bit of a different subject, though, uh, static defense. Okay. It scales very badly against like a death pall type larger army, um, but in Legacy of the Void, there's been an acknowledged emphasis on small armies all over the map, engaging everywhere, more Brood War esque than Wings of Liberty esque. Um, how big of a role in that case will static defense play in the upcoming meta game because of the emphasis on smaller armies? I think it's going to depend race to race, mm-hmm. for sure. I think, for instance, Zerg, especially with how important drones are with the economy change, every time you're using static defense, I feel like that really cuts in. Mm-hmm. For instance, let's just say you build three spine crawlers spread out over the course of like three bases, mm-hmm. and there's one macro hatch, and one macro hatch is a huge deal, and that's three drones. Whereas for Ross and Terran, I think it's going to be a little bit different. I think it's, I think it's going to kind of remain how it is in Heart of the Swarm in terms of static defense. So. Okay, so you're basically saying that the uh, the benefits and the basically buff to static defense is going to be offset by the emphasis on expansions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we got... Yeah, some- from the Protoss perspective, mm-hmm. we spend the least on static defense, if you think about it, because, like... Uh, Terran, static defense, assuming for their ground static defense, which is the bunker, requires supply. You gotta put units in it. Zerg requires sacrificing a drone, which in a way is supply, but not... It's more the fact that you're sacrificing a drone to get it. While Protoss is kind of 
puts it there, right? And while protostatic defense is technically the weakest, it does the least damage, mm -hmm. it also doesn't sacrifice as much, so we're more willing to put more. But I don't think it'll change that much, because when the static... De our static defense isn't that good. Like, versus small armies, like, our like ver well, Zerg gets pretty good against Zerg. Mm -hmm. But versus other Protosses in Terran, like, they can deal with cannons pretty well. They can sometimes catch a drop out, or, like, catch a warp prism or something like that or maybe stop a few dts and zealots but if you have like a more potent small army mm -hmm. like a uh, immortal drop or some marauders coming out they will take care of them so i don't think protoss will like again like he said i think it'll be very similar to heart of the swarm it won't make that much of a difference specifically just because of how these static defenses work they will just stay the same all right joey you know, I uh, I actually think completely differently um, about. I think like the static defense is going to be so much stronger in Legacy of the Void because we see units like Lurkers and Liberators that are going to scale so well with like spine crawlers and spores. Like just the fact that you can't really attack a Lurker when there's you know some spore crawlers positioned accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, I think that also like t I feel that Protoss also has a lot of uh, potential for using. Um, the uh, the defensive you know structures as well. Like uh, you see, Protoss going a lot for like uh, Protoss doing sky toss strategies where they just go pure sky toss with a lot of cannons and even stasis wards from the Oracle, which is really good. And I don't think we've seen enough uh, from that yet to really know that's full potential. I mean, uh, if you run your whole army through a stasis ward. You know that it, it, and also if they're positioned accordingly, correctly uh, near your static defenses, I think that it does help a lot. All right, so we got a little diversity of opinion there. That's interesting. We'll see how that plays out. Um, are it okay? How does having fewer resources per base impact the value of spellcasters? Oh, that's interesting. Um, I would say, okay, go ahead. No, you can go first. I'm thinking. Oh, just in terms of because spellcasters in general, very gas heavy. You have a lot less gas at each base that you can't. You, I mean, this is legacy of the void in general, but army control is very emphasized and it's brought to the forefront. You can't just accidentally lose an infester here and there. Mm -hmm. Part of the swarm when you're on like four or five bases and there's just like a ridiculous amount of gas it's like it's a, it's kind of okay but legacy of the void i feel like every single unit really does matter there's a huge emphasis on keeping every single unit alive and getting the maximum efficiency out of it okay uh to f rephrase the question rock um spellcasters defer from things like roaches because roaches are trading their hp to do damage whereas spellcasters are tra trading their energy which means the longer that that unit stays alive, the more value per its cost. And since its cost is relatively... Uh, is a larger percentage of your relative amount of resources, specifically minerals, because as far as I know, gas wasn't changed, um, then what does that do to the spellcaster? I understand, like, each unit itself is more valuable, but spellcaster specifically... I think gas was changed, wasn't it? I don't know. Maybe did it they was. reduce the amount of gas? I they think did. they did, because I always they get confused did. when I check my opponent's gas. They, and I have 100 percent It's only a thousand gas on each base. Oh, oh. wow. Yeah, okay. Wow. So they dropped It's yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. huge cut. That's what, that's what I was saying in terms of I got you. Yeah, man. Okay, so that was So there's less I was gas on the map. There's okay. a lot less gas. More even more so than the minerals. Wow. I think even the per percentage wise, it was a huge cut. Which is why every time you build a spellcaster or anything that's gas intensive, that's why you're not going to be seeing Mass Raven, like ever. <laughs> pretty much. I don't think it's going to happen rarely. Rock dropping Rock. the knowledge bombs. I could be wrong. It's either 2,000 or 1,000, but either or, it's yeah, a huge yeah. drop from what it was. Yeah. Yeah, it's 2,000. It's 2,000. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, 1,000 would be I remember being snowy. able to make high Templars in a game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but 2,000 is still a huge drop down from 2,500. That's mm -hmm. still 1,000 gas less per base. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, well, that kind of answers multiple questions there. Joey, <laughs> did you have anything added uh, to add to that? Um, yeah, I mean, in Legacy of the Void, it does... 
I feel like uh, we're seeing a lot more. Uh, I mean, it's kind of hard. I feel like we're seeing a lot more, like, for example, in ZVZ, like, uh, like Carter said, with the investors, it seems more relevant that people are just massing, for example, Roach and Ravenger, because uh, it is really difficult to even get those spellcasters out. But I think that in terms of the economy, it does make them a lot more efficient um, if you're able to like fit that into your strategy. Um, I feel like the, the spellcasters in general are, are a little more difficult to use, though. Honestly, just in general. Um. Can I throw a question out there? We're not. Sure. This is more. Like, just in terms of, I feel like the lurk. Maybe this is just me in terms of ZZ, but I feel like the lurker is kind of treading on the investor in terms of its role. Oh yes. Like a lurker yeah. is almost always going to be more efficient than an investor unless you're catching like a retreating army. But like, I really feel like lurkers. In, like it's a, it's kind of easy. It, I don't know if it's easier to control than an investor, but it's it's just way more value for its price than an investor. I don't really see investors right. and or spellcasters in general as much in Legacy of the Void, but yeah, as far as I like, I see it. Um, I feel like Wings of Liberty Investor was meant to be like our mid-game zone control. Uh, in Heart of the Swarm, our swarm hosts were our mid-game zone control. Neither of them worked out because, you know, Infestor, Broodlord, and Wings of Liberty, and then Swarm Host being OP in Heart of the Swarm. The Lurker is kind of a replacement to both of those units, and honestly, it makes them redundant. That's my thoughts on it. Joey? Which is why I was really sad when they got rid of the uh, the one Infestor spell that increased the damage. Mm -hmm. I know that was a boring ability, but I actually thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. As soon as I saw that, I was horrified. <laughs> when they show the when they show the example of the lings or the infester ability, I'm like, I might be quitting. Oh my god, that's scary. But at the same time, you want mass infestors for that though. That's one of those things yeah. where you'd only need one or two. Yeah. It's just the one time that that scenario in that video would happen to me, I'd be like, David, why? <laughs> why would you Starcraft do? on fire? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um. How does reducing the amount of minerals in some nodes compare to reducing the number of nodes from 8 to a lesser number? Like, I've read uh, some articles that said instead of having 8 and 2, um, having 6 mineral nodes and 1 high yield gas could present exactly the same changes that Legacy of the Void was aiming for, but could do it in such a way that would make it more beneficial for taking more than three bases. You know, the three base cap in StarCraft. Damn. I mean, I, I think that... Blizzard in the past... Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. I know Blizzard in the... I know there have been map makers in the past that have tried fancy stuff like that, and Blizzard generally doesn't take those maps. I think that's a lot of convincing, because, like, that's completely on a map maker's decision, right? And then Blizzard's decision to think that's a good idea. So that's not necessarily something we really have to yell at Blizzard to do. That's something, like, map makers would have to do, and then we'd have to convince Blizzard it's a good idea. I don't necessarily know if it's a good idea. I'd have to see games played out on that. That's a thing that's really hard to theorycraft, because, like, uh, say if your main base started with the high yield gas, I can make Protoss OP mm -hmm. because Protoss is really reliant on gas and gets, you know, pretty gas heavy units in the beginning. Four gate slightly stronger because now you can constantly afford stalkers instead of three stalkers and a zealot, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, it, that's very hard to decide for me. I really don't know how that would work out. If it's like the same rate, I guess, maybe, like if it ends up somehow being the same rate, it might be okay. And if it can encourage, like Protoss taking four bases with workers on, then I think that'd be good. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, I really not entirely sure how that would work out. Well, while the other guys are um, responding, I'm gonna give you a link real quick because there's actually an article by one of uh, the ESV map makers. His name uh, escapes me right now, but basically he was contemplating this. It was a few years ago, though. It was before they introduced the changes of Legacy, and I asked him recently on Team Liquid if he still thought these changes were viable, and he actually totally still thinks this would be a better solution than Legacy. I think and Blizzard's f far too... I mean, I don't like attacking Blizzard directly, but I think maybe it's the community too, but I think everyone's a little bit too hesitant to be trying 
map changes. I don't think people understand how big of a deal maps change the game. Right. As opposed to balancing things out, tweaking numbers and units and things like that. And I know there was the double harvest mod. That was probably the one time where a map got attention and there was a tournament for it. And I honestly think that was really profitable because everyone walked away and everyone kind of decided no. But I think we need to do that for more types of maps. I think we honestly need to invest more time in making sure that these other, other um, solutions that people have presented are viable or are not viable. Instead, we're very... very very um, tunnel vision when it comes to maps, which I think map makers really do want it to be more versatile, but everyone's just a little bit too afraid as a community and Blizzard. So. Mm. Telecom? Um, I mean, I think it's definitely an interesting question uh, with having only one gas per base. I mean, if you think about it, so people, you'd, ru uh, you'd rush to three bases and you'd have, you know, 12 less workers you know, essentially on three base. So, but I mean, then it's it would it would. There's so much decision making that goes into like when you take both gases at each base rather mm -hmm. than just one gas at each at, at each base. Uh, and it would change. It would really, I think, change a lot of the game. I mean, it's it would be, it would be interesting, but like others said, it would have to be it would have to be tested. I think it would it would completely change everything. I think. Okay. <laughs> Um, but now is the time. I mean, look yeah. at what, like, macro. Yeah. <laughs> we removed macro mechanics. Right. <laughs> right. So, like, for the we'll time anyway. where it's like, it'd be a big change. Well, now is the time. Mm -hmm. Right. That's true. Something to consider. Tort, uh, did you have anything else to add? Yeah, I looked at the, like, the pictures of maps. I, like, more understand what he meant by that now. Mm hmm. Um, after looking at this a little bit. Okay, yeah, I think that could be interesting. Um, I do wish that we could have a situation, because I know they mentioned the worker efficiency thing in the last thing they wrote, right? Mm -hmm. How they don't like it. And I feel like they missed a point in that, but that's another discussion. But Actually, um, I feel like... We'll be talking huh? about that in just a second. Good. But in the terms of anything that would make it so that you uh, have to take more than three bases, I would love, because I remember playing Brood War. And having yeah. to defend like six bases, and that was wonderful. But right now, I don't really have a reason to do that. Well, I'm comf I make three bases, and I'm comfortable at it, right? I'm like, I am safe enough to take a fourth now, but why would I? Mm -hmm. And I kind of want to be like, if I could take a fourth right now and get a bigger advantage through it, I should. Right. But right now, if I have an opportunity to take a fourth, there's really no reason to take it unless I'm running out of minerals in my main soon. Okay. So I kind of want to be able to do that. So if this would let me do that, mm -hmm. and I would love Blizzard to try it. Yeah, ex uh, that's kind of how I feel about it, man. I I would love to see the game go back to where one base of 16 workers did not mine exactly the same as two bases of eight workers each. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of what you were just talking about there, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so some players have theorized that there's the three base mining cap we referenced earlier in StarCraft II. Uh, does everyone here agree with that? Does anyone have any dispute with that? That there's a three base mine cap? Basically, yeah. Um, yeah. That... I, yeah. Okay. Zurich has I a slight exception like with it's... that with Ling base styles. Mm -hmm. They like they take like a fourth base and add a few workers there and take the gases. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, I agree with that, yeah. Okay. I feel like in Legacy of the Void it's definitely forcing you to um continue to keep expanding if uh, the yeah. I think it definitely get, you get a a much stronger advantage if you just continue to progressively expand. Mm -hmm. um, and deny but you're still you're still getting three bases mined. Yeah, You're not talking total bases, just mining bases. One thing to defend Blizzard's decision yeah. on this Legacy of the Void thing, I have noticed when I mentioned that time, where I'd be like, I could take a fourth now, but why would I? Because I it won't get me anything, right? Mm -hmm. And like you see in the void, the time that I'm thinking that, like if I'm playing my game really, really well and I like shut down all harassment, I did harassment, I did damage, I'm a really good place. The time that I'm thinking I can take a fourth base now, my mind is my main is actually already mining out, so it actually works out. Mm -hmm. So it kind yeah. of works. The legacy of the model is just in a different way. It's a forced way rather than a suggested way, and it really this all depends yeah. on Blizzard's design decision of what they want to do. But I would kind of prefer the encouraged way, but I'm a little bit. I'm going to be too mad with this method <laughs> that they're doing right now. I'm going to be too mad. Yeah. 
I think that it's uh, at least for Zerg because I I play I've meddled with both the races, but I think it's the most natural for Zerg in terms mm -hmm. of the legacy of void changes. Where let's just say I have total map control, and you you can just like double, triple, like you, you can just expand so much, and you reap the benefits from it. It fe it feels like it, especially with how fast your bases mine out. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a little bit more difficult for uh, the other races, I would say, but. I feel like for Zerg, it's definitely a lot easier to just expand multiple times, and it feels natural. It doesn't feel as forced, but the other races, it does feel a little bit more forced. What's interesting is that since they removed the macro mechanics, Terran is now experiencing the same thing Protoss experiences when they expand quickly, because now they don't have mules when they expand, so they don't get the extra benefit of the mule when they make a third base, regardless if it's mining or not. Now they actually have to be mining from it. So I think that they've made it even harder for Terran to expand, much as has been for Protoss. Though Terran still has their mobile army they can no longer afford issue. But I think it's interesting that they've done that as well. I haven't actually thought about that till now. <laughs> Telecom? Yeah, um, I mean, I think that, honestly, uh, it's it's definitely a lot different for Terran right now without mules. Uh I mean, I think that we're honestly going to see, like, my honest opinion, we might see, like, an SCV, like, HP buff on the SCVs. Mm -hmm. Like, because without the mule, they, they're they really, like, Terran gets kind of easily put behind, I feel, if they, say, an Oracle or something comes in. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm a little, even not even, play, I, I, I also don't have too much experience playing Terran in the beta, but I have, you know, a little bit. It just feels a lot different without mules. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's just really relying on, you know, getting your supply count timing down good and, and knowing when to scan, I guess. Uh, yeah, and I guess it's a lot harder to parade. You can't, like, parade push anymore. So, uh, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. So do you think I, the... Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Uh, I was about to change the subject, so... Oh, okay. I was just going to say, I think if they, like, if they were to keep these changes, like, the biggest thing to, like... All they, I think they would really need to do is find a good reduction of cost for bio units. Mm -hmm. And then maybe, like he said, like how they had it in Brood War, have SCVs with more health. Like they have 45 health right now, they have a little bit more. But to increase it a little bit more might be nice because uh, if Terran loses SCVs, especially when they're going bio at the current state, it's just they're dead. So if like an Oracle flies in, kills six, even just six SCVs, that's huge. So if they could like bump the health a little bit and make that into four SCVs, that could actually help out a lot and then reduce the cost of bio a little bit so that they can do their continuous stream. I think that's all Blizzard would really... That, that's not easy. I'm not trying to apply that's easy to figure out, but I feel like that's what Blizzard would have to do to make Bioterran an actual viable thing at the moment. How would increasing the SCV HP affect early game worker harassment with the scout, the poking at the drones, all that sort yeah. of thing. I feel like that would have unintentional consequences, no? Pulling the boys? <laughs> yeah. Well, without mules, pulling the boys isn't that good. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Th then you can't come back. I'm thinking ahead of like super buff SCVs just yeah. charging towards Colossus. Like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more talking the one-on-one -on -one worker battles. Yeah, so... It... I feel yeah, like in weird. higher level games, when you harass the worker, it's very unlikely to die, right? It's just to make the t it's just because you have more APM, you have the enough APM to do it, and you just want to be annoying and maybe kill the worker. In the lower leagues, that worker's dead. Like the first time I think I ever played Terran, when I was like bronze, like I I didn't know you could get the worker to stop like building the building, so I would always lose it. And it was the most frustrating. So I guess maybe to give it a little bit more health might help them a bit in that aspect. But I think in the higher level leagues, like it just won't make that much of a difference because they're not going to lose the worker anyways, most likely in those scenarios. Now when you think about things like an Adept coming in, mm -hmm. currently Adepts seem a bit strong, especially in the early game. So that might actually help Terran a lot with like Adept Dolans because now it'll take, like say if you bumped it to, I don't know, 60 health, for example, it would take three shots instead of two shots. Or whatever. It take, does it take two? Sh yeah, two shots to kill. Yeah, it would take three shots to kill a SCV from an adept. So that could actually help a lot because that skills, especially when there's like a low unit count situation in the early game, that'll scale a lot higher. So that could actually be an indirect nerf to the adept in a way to help. Uh, it would also hugely nerf the. Uh, it also hugely nerf the Dark Templar too. Two hits instead yes. of one, which yeah, yeah, yeah. that'd be interesting. 
Yeah, because currently if your Dark Templar is hitting, in HOTS at least, if your Dark Templar is taking two shots to kill SCVs, you're really bad at Chrono in your upgrades. <laughs> so... <laughs> no yeah. Chrono! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... One thing that's... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, one thing that's really interesting, I mean, if you look back, they did make, like, Legacy of the Void a lot more similar to Brood War, as we've said, you know, many times. And uh, if you go back and look at Brood War, I mean, the SCVs have, you know... In a one-on-one -on -one fight, the SCV will beat the probe and the drone unless the probe or the drone is like micro properly, which is kind of difficult to do. I mean, they could always maybe change the attack animation to somehow on the drone and probe to to balance it out or something like that. But that's just a wild thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, drones should get the probe the moving oh. shot back. <laughs> yeah, right. I miss that. So, do you think that the mine out rate being so high will cause more emphasis on things like Fabian strategy, wars of attrition? Um, in my experience, it has. You don't know how often I'm stuck in my base with siege tanks and liberators out there, and I'm like, I just need enough phoenixes, and maybe I can break this, and then I lose because I look at my main, and the workers are just sitting there in a pile, and my natural has like 30 workers because he killed my third, and I had to send them over there. So I know currently with Terran, they're doing that a lot, and Zerg's just kind of like plop 10 lurkers in front of my base. <laughs> and then I'm like, why didn't I go air to toss this game? Why did I think Link Sentry would work today? So it's already kind of happening, and then PvP it doesn't really happen. PvP is just like whoever makes more adepts wins. So that doesn't really happen in PvP. But I definitely, at least for Protoss versus Terran and versus Zerg, there's a lot of sieging the Protoss player on two or three bases, and then you know trying to make us mine out while they just expand, expand, expand. I haven't seen that from Terran since the uh, uh, changes, but I haven't played that many games with like as many games with the macro changes. So maybe they're still doing that. I just haven't seen it as often. I've seen people trying bio more than mech. Okay. Uh, telecom? Um, I mean, I definitely I feel like that things are so promoting aggr uh, like aggression and harassment that uh, it's not really... Those, those sort of situations don't really seem to be happening as much. It's just sort of like, you know, uh, high, high uh, harassment and um, aggression so I, I don't think that it's really it's very it, I haven't really had a stalemate yet um, or anything like where it's just kind of who is gonna you know mine more minerals or anything like that um, so I, I don't know I think it's kind of a tricky question really okay yeah that, that was the goal tricky questions yeah <laughs> uh, okay rock I think the biggest one with this is that Legacy of the Void, whoever has map control has a huge advantage because yeah. expanding is like right. the linchpin. So if you're the one who can expand and you're keeping them constantly under pressure, I feel like there's kind of a more of a like a uh, snowfall that happens really quickly. So I just think that map control is really promoted. And once again, kind of like Telecom was saying, there's just a lot of like crazy. You both sides trying to be aggressive so that if they can establish that map control, then they're going to have a huge advantage. So. Okay. Cool. I will say it is a lot more aggressive. You don't know how many times I'm out on the map and then suddenly three Menevacs are in my main. I'm like, this doesn't happen nearly as often in Heart of the Swarm. What is... <laughs> Calm down, Terran. Calm down. <laughs> hey, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, and clearly you do, you made it this far after all, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much. And have a great day.